what makes a good strong tattoo in, in your opinion that, that will survive time? What do you think the key elements are for that? Um, I think a little less is more. Mm. Um, this, this I kind of like myself. Um, a black, black and gray is like for sure the, the kind of ground to the whole thing because you don't really know what happened. Well, we do. Colors, colors in the end just kind of slowly sift away. Uh, so if you really want to look at the longevity of a tattoo, then yeah, it should look good just in black and gray. Mm. And then you can put all your colors on top. Um, I, I, I must admit, so like working in Stuttgart now, I mean, I have seen color tattoos I've done um, 30 years ago and they, they still look okay. I mean, they, mm. the colors are still there, which I'm quite surprised about. Some so, certain colors, they kind of, kind of do disappear, but I think that's more the, the brand, if you like the 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 um certain kind of um pigment that we used back then um so yeah and like i say it's like just for the readability i think like too small too detailed um yeah this can be a pr bit of a problem mm. i think in the in a super long time i mean this was something that horiyoshi always used to to uh, say to me when i'd come over and i'd be all excited and sit down in his studio and say you know i want to show you some photographs and put this little collection of photographs down on the floor and and he'd look and he'd just say how old and i'd be like um three years and he'd spin it off to the side. How old? <laughs> yeah, you'd say like four years. <laughs> he'd spin it off to the side. And it was like anything under five years wasn't really worth talking about. You know, mm -hmm. it was like if it, if it had done the five year mark, it's kind of settled into the body. And then you can really see where it's going to go. Uh, and I thought, actually, that that was something that he told me when I was quite young. And it always kind of stuck with me because it was quite sort of disappointing in a way. It was like, uh, oh, fuck, actually, I don't think I've even been tattooing long enough to impress him, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, yeah, we. I mean, we live and learn as well. It's like I. I hope that that's what tattooers do. You know, it's like when they're working for any length of time, and and people start coming back with tattoos. Yeah, we actually look at what we've done, and actually register like, oh yeah, well that works. That that holds up that doesn't work. Don't fucking do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, it, it's part of a journey. I mean, it, it's, um, it's sad. I, I mean, I do love that fucking thing on Instagram. I'm a sucker for stuff like that, but tooth, what is it called? The tooth, truth fairy. Truth fairy. I don't think I've seen it. Oh no. Oh, it's brilliant. It's like, a, it's, it's the flashy tattoos. Okay. And then it's a picture of the same thing healed up. Like, I don't think it's even six months old. Yeah. That's something and like the, that. What you mean? Yeah. The, the reality of the thing is just fucking out. It's yeah. two worlds. Yeah. It's like, you know, Photoshop to the max. And then afterwards, it's just, what is it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's the difference. It's the the people who are tattooing for that photograph, and then there's the people that are tattooing for the five year, what it's gonna look like down the road. Yeah, very different yeah. type of tattooing, isn't it? 
It is, but you know, hopefully, um, hopefully they'll um, wake up in their own time. You know, mm -hmm. they'll be able to to understand that certain things don't work. Um, you can still do a nice small tattoo and and details and stuff. I mean, I I I remembered. I actually did. I I. It wasn't something super, um, this wasn't like super artistic from my side, but it, it was a painting of this guy at Broad that he absolutely loved. And it was all these bodies intertwined into each other, mm. you know, holding each other and kind of reaching out. And, um, and I did this tattoo on his whole upper arm, and it, I guess it was like 13 bodies or something. Um, I kept it black and gray. I said to him, I, I don't want to do this thing in color. Um, and I'd asked him, like, come back, you know, when it's healed and I get a nice photo. So I never took a photograph of this piece, but I remember it, and I remember thinking, yeah, I want to know what that looks like. Anyway, the guy said, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll be back. I'll be back, you know. And then one year goes by, five years goes by. We showed up 20, what was it, 20, 26 years later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I got a photograph of it. And I must admit, I was kind of like, well, yeah, I kind of missed the boat on a nice photo, but it's still there and it, nice. it still kind of works. You know, it's still, it's old, of course it is, yeah. But it's still, you know, you can, you can still recognize what's going on in it. Yeah. Mm. What, what would your daily setup be as far as, um, you know, liners and machines and magnums or, or something, you know, like uh, what, what's your kind of go-to? Um, I like an, a nice solid line. So like, I, I kind of use a lot of like straight liners. So I use like a straight nine. Okay. Even a straight 11. Um, if I want to do something a little bit more detailed, maybe a seven or nine kind of where it's pulled together a little. Um, I mean, years and years ago, when I made my own needles, um, I would make a nine, not even a straight one, you know, and it would be the same as an open nine now. Okay, yeah. And, I mean, like, Jesus, sometimes if I pick up a, a like, pre-made five or seven, I can make, I, I mean, I can make a line that looks like a type three. It's like, yeah. what the fuck is that about? I, I, I really don't understand the, the kind of progression of the whole needle thing. Yeah. Smaller because I think, or something, right? Like, <laughs> I think it's kind of, for me, for me, where I come from, it's kind of fucking nonsense. You know, it's too much. It's just mm. too much. It's like, you know, I'm the kind of guy, if I go in a shop and I want to buy a pair of jeans, I kind of know roughly which ones I want. And for anybody who doesn't, going in there is a fucking drag, right? You're going to spend all afternoon because there's fucking 500 pairs of jeans to bloody choose from, yeah? Yeah. Um, it's just, it, it, I don't think it's that helpful, you know? And it, it's the same stuff with colors and stuff, yeah? So anyway, back to the setup. So I'll, I'll have like a, a big liner, a kind of little bit smaller one that I might do hair or teeth or, you know, like uh, some patterns or something. And then, um, yeah, I mean, background stuff I try to do with biggest magnum I can. 
depending on the 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 size of the background i mean my work varies it's yeah. some of it's a little bit more traditional kind of smaller background and some of it's huge so it'll be anything from a a, a 23 to a 35 oh, wow. magnum and then um yeah, for the for the smaller areas of colouring, for for really packing in in tighter spaces, I I don't mind to go down. I mean, then it's like my biggest needle years ago, which was a fifteen. Yeah, has become kind of like something I might colour the teeth in with, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so yeah, that's um, what I'm curious about, actually. Yeah. Yeah, so everything's kind of been pushed. But I I remember when when Philip turned me on to that stuff, it's years ago. I mean, I'd see him working with that stuff and be like, fucking hell, how'd you do that? And he'd be like, oh, go on, you can do it. You know, like, and I'd be like, no. <laughs> you know, I, I like my 15, you know, and then I kind of like, I tried a 19 and, yeah, and even a 19 is kind of small now. Uh, <laughs> when you get used to the 25, it's it's the 25 is kind of all rounder. And mm. then the, the bigger ones are like, it's just so much easier to get really nice shades. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really, my mind boggles. If I try and do that with a 15, it's going to look fucking choppy. I, I, you, I mean, it's going to be fine. Like, if you're going to look at it in three years, like Horiyoshi said, you know, it's going to look perfect. But in the moment, it's going to look like, fucking hell, what have you done there, you know? Um, so, it's, it, yeah, it's just something that's really nice to work with. Uh. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, Philip, not only did he uh, kind of, Start using those big mags before they became a thing. He basically invented them, right? But he also innovated the tubes to 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 yeah to carry, you know because because the wrong tube shape isn't gonna really work with them, is it? Like no, I've I've got loads of big magnum tubes from from all kinds of people. Yeah, people used to make them and like bring them in the shop and drop them on me, you know, like and. Oh, they were they were fucking pain in the ass. I mean, I thought it was the needles, but it was actually the flow of the the ink and like how right. the needles were like sitting on these huge flat surfaces and yes, just uh, it, yeah, it just it wasn't working. So you'd have to dip every two seconds, which is kind of taken away from the the whole idea of it, you know. You want to have a little bit of ink flow sitting somewhere that will just be pushed over that nice little lip into the skin and you can work a little longer. Eh? I mean, the whole idea is to kind of speed it up a little bit, I think. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've had, I've had those big needles worked on me. I mean, they, they, yeah, they, they can be painful, but yeah. they're fast. Yeah, definitely. So the pain ratio to the to the speed of it is actually like well worth it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, that you're <laughs> actually gonna you're gonna get through this thing that much faster. Yeah, yeah. With somebody <laughs> messing around with a fifteen. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and you still you're using coils. I I am indeed. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Um, I I have tried like all kinds of like different different machines, rotaries, and and kind of uh, up and down kind of slide bar. Um, I guess they're all working with rotaries somehow. Um, yeah, I've been able to work with them, um, but I still do fall back onto like machines i think the only the the one thing that i would like really say that that did something for me for a little while when i was using a swash drive 
Okay. I used a squash drive for a, for a little while, and it was fine. It was good. It was fast. It was it was easy to work with. Good good color. Good. Um, I didn't feel quite so tired afterwards, just because of the noise. The noise was gone. Mm. Maybe also because the machines are tick lighter as well. Um, but hey, you know, I'm an old dog as well. I went back to my old ways and that blaring machine in my ear, it's kind of like, that's where I'm most comfortable, you know. <laughs> uh, my wife's just... not too happy about it. She says I'm going deaf. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I said there's nothing to do with tattooing, love. <laughs> I've been in shops where everybody's using uh, uh, rotary machines, and they're actually they all they're, they're, they're not they're not used to the noise, and they'll look at me like like they're annoyed that my machine is so loud. <laughs> yeah, this is bizarre. Eh? This is yeah. the modern tattoo convention. Yeah, you walk around and you're like, "Fucking, is anybody working?" Yeah. <laughs> Um, I I went into I went into like one of the oldest shops in uh, America, and um, was visiting with Mike. Mike Roper took me down there, and I we walked into this shop, and it's a little museum, and uh, and um, yeah, it was it was just like wow, well, this is one of the oldest shops in America. It's like fucking there's four people working and you couldn't hear a thing what they weren't even talking <laughs> weird i think they had earpods in and like you know like <laughs> they're listening to music and stuff it's like it's just bizarre it was like wow so yeah i've i mean i've had a few guys working or people working in my shop and they've got their you know uh, tattoo machines with silencers on, I call them. Like, yeah. <laughs> and there's me in the back room. <laughs> I think they've become the majority now, though, haven't they? It seems like. I think the majority of people are using these quiet. Um... Yeah, dildos. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. I know everybody's going to hate that, but it's true. Dude. <laughs> I know. I know. It's no offense. No, and there's, and they produce great work with them and everything. I just the same color. Like <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, I, I've, got, I've picked them up and tried that. I mean, there is, there is. Uh, I mean, I, I can understand the, you know, the attraction and the. I'm just wondering what you're going to do when the motor doesn't work anymore. You know, I can, I know I had to fix my machine. Then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think so. 